Doing a handmade Christmas is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, but we're done and we've got most of the things up that we made. Stay tuned for our home tour and definitely check the links below because we're doing a collaboration with a bunch of other YouTubers and we're letting you see how we decorate our homes for Christmas. In Utah, we get a lot of snow. So I keep my Christmas porch fairly minimal. I don't put a lot out there because in about, I don't know, a week, it's gonna have snow on it until- Saturday. Uh, yeah, until Christmas <laughs> passes. So I really just focus on the area that's under the eaves. I always like to do some sort of sign. This year we used the essential stencils and we did the Merry Christmas sign. And then I love having a fresh garland over the door. I added a little bit of ribbon that was actually just left over from my tree last year to add a little bit of color. And then I did a fresh wreath with a big bow on it on my front door. Coming down the side, I just have a little bench that's always on my front porch. So we just grabbed some old logs that had moss growing on them because I don't know about you guys, but we have an old wood pile and they were there. So they weren't anything we bought. We just put them on there. And then we've got our little red chair with the skates. I love the ice skates because they're vintage. They kind of allude to the winter Christmas season. And that little chair has been painted multiple colors. It was like a dark blue, then it was a minty blue, and now it's Christmas. So I painted it red and that's my front porch. It changes color every season. And when it gets too many layers of paint on it, then we get rid of that chair and get a new chair. Right as you enter the front door, we've got this mirror that we put various things on and banners and stuff throughout the seasons. But this has our Merry Christmas banner that we made with old book pages and IOD stamps. And then right across from that, there's a bench that we use to put our shoes on and off and store shoes underneath. But we've also got a big old crusty reclaimed wood panel that I've got a shelf on and we put our nativity that we have that's the only nativity we have in the whole house this year is that cutout that we did with the plaid what is it decoupage on the back yeah it's a napkin I had grand ideas of a huge nativity and having Zeb cut it all out but that didn't happen so we used a nativity that we actually sell on our website and we just decoupaged a piece of board and framed it out because I want the first thing that when people walk into our home we have a very Christ-centered Christmas and I want the birth of Christ to be front and center. So that nativity is the first thing you see when you open the door and you look to your left, the nativity is right there. After you hit the entrance, we've got this old black door. We actually have it mounted to the wall. I like doors and windows, so you're gonna see them all throughout this tour. And I like to give them a little bit of Christmas spirit. So it just has a boxwood wreath on it that's from a local supplier. And then it has a Believe banner that I actually made like three or four years ago. And we printed out the word Believe on the um, burlap and then made it into a banner. And that's something that's been a family favorite for quite a few years now and was handmade by me. On the wall where we have our trees and our window gallery wall, we wanted to hang something that would be kind of like a focal point. I found these embroidery hoops thrifting in Tucson back in May when we were at my sister's wedding. And I've been thinking and thinking of what to do with these. I knew I wanted to do something cool and just brown paper and stamps. JB put some life in them when she added the, what do you call it, the greenery? <laughs> the greenery the and the Christmas bows. foliage, as it were. So where I got the foliage from was, we have wreaths from years past and I get rid of my Christmas decor pretty regularly. I rotate it out, sell stuff at the shop, but I have this old wreath that was kind of dilapidated and not nice enough to sell, but it had lots of really good foliage. It was so, really dusty. It had been on top of yeah. the fridge in the garage. <laughs> so we just hosed it off and then I picked all the best parts and then hot glued them to the top with a bow and then I clipped off some berries because I always have berry twigs and just made a little bit of Christmas on the top. And we kept the actual stamping fairly neutral because I wanted to have something not super busy and take away from the Christmas tree. So I feel like if you look at the tops of them, they actually tie into the theme and the coloring on the Christmas tree. So it kind of brings the whole wall together. So all of the ornaments have either been handmade or there was a couple that we got from Ikea that we uh, we manipulated pretty heavily. We DIY'd them. Yeah. Everything's been DIY'd except for the berry picks because I don't even know how you begin to make that and they're pretty inexpensive. And oh. then the garland is actually not something I made. I was actually gonna braid some yarn together to make a garland, but then when I went to the craft store, I found oversized fluffy yarn, probably the size of a 50 cent piece around 
and I just was like, that's perfect. It's white, it's fluffy, it looks like snow, and it's really rather inexpensive. I, I could probably do like 10 trees with what I got, so. All I can think about now is how to DIY my own berry picks. DIY, <laughs> you have a sickness. We've got videos for all of this, so if you're watching this video thinking I want more information, we're gonna put all the links below. We don't have a link for the clear plastic ornaments that we filled with stuff, unless that gets a video up, I don't know. If you'd like to see a full video of us decorating the tree, even though we've already done the tour, comment below. We actually shot a video and never wound up editing it, so if that's something you would like to see, we can do that. Maybe we can include some clips of how we made some of the other ornaments and kind of have a whole compilation of the Christmas tree. Yeah, that'd be good. Because even though it's like a slim tree, it did take a little bit to get all the decorations done. Let's be honest, it took us like six hours to decorate that tree. Granted, we had to make some more, and glitter the topper from the <laughs> topper is from Ikea. It was like $3.99, but then we had to glitter it. Yeah, we made we made more decorations. We're like, ooh, that's not enough. So we had to make more. You'll notice at the base of our tree, we don't have a traditional tree skirt. On the base of our tree, we're using a crock. We actually cut down the metal part that holds the tree up so it fits down into the crock. And then I just used a drop cloth from Amazon that I bleached and I just kind of crumpled it up underneath the crock, and that makes the perfect farmhouse tree skirt, really inexpensive, and when I'm all done, I can use it to paint on. In years past, I've gone to Hobby Lobby, and it's like the great thing you have to do before Thanksgiving even is pick wrapping paper, because otherwise the good stuff is wrong, and they coordinate it. But in this year, I really wanted a theme of simplicity throughout my Christmas decor, so I went with brown paper, because we use it for shipping, so we have a lot of it, and I always think of, you know, little packages tied up in strings, so I just used Baker's Twine, brown paper, and then I bought some little tags that were like two bucks for 50 of them at Ikea, and that's it. All of our packages will be wrapped that way, simply, and my goal, because we usually want it. Packages yeah. tied up in strings. My goal is to have all my Christmas presents wrapped way far in advance, because normally we're up to like 2 a.m. wrapping on Christmas Eve, Last year, we were redoing the kitchen and the upstairs living room. We didn't even wrap. I just put it in priority boxes, taped them shut, and put their name on it and stuck it under the tree. I don't think the kids And then we care. reused the priority boxes and mailed them with product out later. You know we did. <laughs> so on the coffee table, kept it real simple. We've got this dough bowl that we switch out seasonally with different various things in it. We've got some dry brushed pine cones and then just a random crib rung. <laughs> Mostly just for funsies. It's chippy. There's some picks in there with some berries, some berry picks, and then leftover garland, what was left from the garland on the door and above our lamp. We always buy our garland at Costco and you get a good amount of it, so I have enough to do my lamp, my coffee table, and my dough bowl, and then the front door. So on Instagram, when I post pictures of my living room, uh, one of the things I get asked about all the time is my pillows. So for Christmas, I decided to do a cream wool throw and a cable knit red throw. And on my two chairs, I've just got two IKEA pillowcases that I stamped with IOD stamps. We've got a video for that. And then on my big long couch, I have these red ticking stripe pillows that I've actually had forever and ever. I just wash them and keep them around. And I use them year round, but I like to pull them out for Christmas especially. And then Zip is holding my IKEA rug hack. That was an IKEA rug, it was $3.99. I just sewed the edges and along the bottom and it makes a really beautiful textured pillow. And then in the middle, we, our pillow is done with two towels from IKEA, there's a two pack that I bought and I sewed a Merry Christmas ribbon across the middle and it makes a really nice big pillow. I like to sew a lot of my pillows because if I bought them, they would cost me a ton more money and if I make them, I can get them custom. I can do things that not everybody else has and it's really not that complicated. When I sew all the edges, you have that little part that's left over that's really hard to whip stitch and here's my secret. And I made these like three years ago, where's the bottom? So this little spot right here, I just hot glue like these three, four inches with Gorilla Glue hot glue, and that will hold that shut, and then I don't have to whip stitch it, and it looks really nice and neat, and for a long time, I didn't make pillows because I could never figure out how to close them, like, easily, and hands down. It totally works. They don't fall apart. I mean, I wouldn't put them in the dryer, but it's definitely a hack you might want to try. So a couple years ago, maybe last year, we can't remember, we made the pom-pom garland that goes over the In Me Your Joy is Full sign, and then we coordinated that with more little pom-poms that go on the stockings that Jamie hand sewed last year. Still handmade, but last year. 
and not sewed very well. I tried to make them all the same, but I don't like to use patterns and I'm not one for straight pins, so none of my sewing is symmetrical. It's all homespun. They look great and they hold all the stuff for the stockings, so we're winning. <laughs> They're just made of felt and then red ticking stripe fabric that also ties into the pillows on the couch. I like to kind of, that's the other thing about making things handmade. You can take similar fabrics and textures and tie them into your whole decor so there's a theme throughout, whereas if you buy it off the shelf, sometimes you can't do that. Well, and then the garland continues over the lamp here, and then we've also got our centerpiece. We have an entire DIY video. That's a, those are Dollar Tree trees in the centerpiece. That's some wood and stamped and glittered. More glitter. Yeah, we like to use glitter tastefully. Just a little bit of glitter. In fact, <laughs> funny fact, when we were decorating the Christmas tree, I was just going to put the Ikea ornaments on the way they came and just make an excuse about why I didn't, you know, do any DIY. And Zeb's like, those need glitter. We needed to do something on them. They I just, needed to be changed. I just love it that you wanted to add more glitter. I was like, yes. It was all we had. It was all I could think of to do quickly. We didn't do a whole lot in the kitchen itself this year. We've got the sign that Jamie made using a couple different stencils and we put that over the lamps here wreath with the shutters because we're going to switch that out seasonally with different signs. Then we've got our Noel sign we made out of salvage wood with a cutout that we painted red. That's probably what, three years ago now? Is that three years old? Yeah, it's been a while. I bought the word Noel cutout and then you took the old chippy salvage that we had and just made a backdrop for it and it's one of my favorite pieces. Tell them about your treats. So this really isn't decor related, but I say it is. For Christmas, I like to have a variety and selection of cookies and treats. Trader Joe's, hands down, absolutely my favorite. I'm not paid to say this, I love their Christmas treats. So in one jar, you're gonna find the little star mint cookies with the little dots on them, because I think they're cute. And then in the next jar, we've got our Christmas JoJo's, which are like Oreo cookies, but they have like peppermint, like crunchy peppermint in them. And then of course, the iced gingerbread, and from the time that they hit Trader Joe's, I know they are good. They're sharp. They, they, if you like a sharp gingerbread cookie, they're delicious. I, from the time that they hit Trader Joe's shelves till the end of the season, I have them on my counter, and they're some of my favorite treats. And I'm hoping that it's a good memory for the kids, like mint chocolate cookies and gingerbread men. And realistically, I'm not gonna make them all, so Trader Joe's takes care of that for me. I know they'll be a good memory for Jack. He's always in them. This is true. One of the other things that I like to do is just take a couple of simple towels in the colors that I'm decorating with for whatever season. In this case, I'm using the red with white polka dot, which also matches my pillow on my couch. And then just one of the Ikea towels behind it, just their standard flower sack with a ribbon. The reason why I tie ribbon around it is because when mom has tied ribbon around it, then everybody knows that it's decorative and not for use for wiping hands. Jack and I had a conversation about it. We'll see how well he does, but the ribbon kind of, it dresses it up but then lets them also know that i'm using it for decoration last but not least the bedroom which is it gets changed out seasonally too because it's one of the other places in the house that's decorated with a cohesive theme well the kids rooms are cohesive they're just not seasonally changed and we're lucky if we can see the floor like we decorate them and they don't stay but our bedroom is a fun place to do that and i don't really do a ton in there because it's a bedroom so all we changed out is we added red curtains that we've had from ikea for the last few years we didn't make those we didn't make those sorry there's also two red pillows on the bed we didn't make those either i just happen to have them they're red polka dot from ikea and then we've got a throw on the end of the bed, also cable knit red from Ikea. So I guess Ikea throughout. And the bedroom then, was not handmade. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I ran out of steam. I wasn't going to knit a blanket and sew more pillows. But we could make the berry picks. Nice. We're not doing that. Okay, so next to the TV, I have little pots from Ikea, and then I put Christmas trees that I purchased at Michael's just to add a little bit of Christmas flair, and then we've got the fake fireplace going so we can feel all warm and toasty. And then I carried those Christmas trees onto our nightstands, and then for the little scarves or squares of fabric, all that is is just a towel from Ikea. I bought a two-pack, and one of them's sitting over there on the oven, and the other one is cut in half, and then I placed that underneath the potted Christmas tree and what I did after I cut it I didn't feel like bringing out my sewing machine again so I busted out the hot glue and the seam that's across the back is just hot glued it works out great I'm only using it for holiday decor and I feel like that kind of ties it together and all of our home kind of has a cohesive theme we decorate really farmhouse so very white stripes some polka dots lots of neutrals 
but very traditional in our reds and greens. And my green generally is a little bit more muted, and yeah. so is my red. I like like a barn. It's not gonna cherry. punch you in the face. Yeah, like a muted cherry red is kind of my thing. And a little bit of glitter here and there. Little pops of glitter that end up all over the house. In case you're wondering, our kids get their very own Christmas tree in the basement, and they put all their fun ornaments on there, and they can do whatever they want with it. It's actually pretty exciting for them because they know not to touch mom's tree, that's the boring decorated tree, and they get to have their way with their own tree. Usually it's Star Wars ornaments. Yeah. If you want to achieve some of these looks, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. You can purchase the paints, the stamps, the stencils. What else is there? Like, I love having we them on- We don't have glitter. Yeah, we don't carry glitter. You'll have to get that at the craft store. <laughs> One of the things that's really important to me though is to have this stuff on hand because when I'm ready to craft, I don't want to go to the store. And there's certain stamps and stencils that I use over and over again on multiple things. So I just have them handy. In fact, the, one of the very last things we did for this Christmas tour was paint the chair. Yeah. So we had red paint, barn red fairy chalk mother, and I just painted it on there. If you're watching this video the day it comes out, you're watching it on the very last day of our sale for Cyber Monday, Black Friday. So be sure to hit the Black Friday list at jamierayvintage.com and don't miss out on any of our sales on our stamps, paint, and Zeb's corbels. Be sure you're checking out the other videos. We did a bunch of videos with a bunch of other creators and people that do like vlogging and things like that and they've got some really amazing ideas. So if you're looking for some inspiration, check their videos out. And of course we'll have a playlist below with all the videos that led up to this home tour. And don't forget to comment if you want a full video on how we decorated our Christmas tree. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.